Oh, happy, happy Tuesday, everybody. We are sitting here laughing at Steve's shenanigans behind the camera. Um, he's being a goofball. Um, being so, a hi, piece. Steve. Everybody say hi to Steve. Hi, um, Steve. I'm Patty. I'm Carrie. I'm and, Steve. And, <laughs> exactly. Nick, you want to go? Nah. No. No. Okay. <laughs> okay, guys. Um, we are Studio R12, and we make stencils, but we paint like nobody's business. Today we are going to show you some stuff about painting mm -hmm. on so many surfaces Everything. and so many things, but the subject is fall. It's fall, y'all. It's fall, y'all, this weekend. And it's so nice to see the change. If the garden has to die down and do the thing, at least I'm going to get pretty leaves out of it. Yes. So, well, know. and I think that also talking about what we are talking about today is it's fall. Yeah. But it's also Christmas, and it's, it's also, also winter, and it's, it's also, also spring, Easter, and it's, it's also, also everything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the subject besides fall today is... Our I? most versatile stencil we have out of 7,000. Shall I reveal? Absolutely. <laughs> buffalo plaid. Buffalo or plaid. plaid. And we have... So today's buffalo day for us. We yeah. are talking about buffalo plaid. We have buffalo chicken dip for our snack. We did. It's like <laughs> such a fun thing. So um, we are going to show you how to... Use buffalo plaid in many, many ways for crafting. So this is a crafting video. It is a DIY video. It is a save money video. It's it's surface video. I'm going to show you um, paint can, ribbon, burlap. Um, I'm not going to do all of it, so it's not going to be two hours long because we're hungry. <laughs> we are hungry. Um, but I think one of the most important parts of today's lesson, Patty and I were talking about it before we started as... Mm. Why a buffalo plaid stencil is one of the most important things to have. Let me count the ways. Yes. So um, here you go, right? So no, wait, we can't talk about it yet. Okay, I have yeah. to say. Okay. We're not ready yet. We're not ready We're yet. not ready yet. Okay, let me get to my page. So guys. Um, welcome, guys. We want to say <laughs> hi to you. Welcome. Uh, make sure you're asking us questions. Um, we're here to, this is, the live is chatty and talky, but because we want to, kind of disseminate subjects to yeah. you guys, but then we also want to answer your questions. So that's like literally why we're here um, every Tuesday. So, um, except when I'm not. It's <laughs> rare. Hello. LOL. Sometimes she forgets. Just sometimes. Yeah. Those weird appointments they schedule on you. Know you know, like, Tuesday. yeah. Yeah. We're going to close on a house coming up in about 30 days. And I, I was like, so they said, will both of you be there? And I was like, Will it be Tuesday? <laughs> if it's Tuesday, then no. <laughs> if it's Tuesday, I can't close on my house. I'm sorry. So let's talk about some things. Okay. So on our YouTube channel and on Facebook, we go live every Tuesday at 12 p.m. Eastern. We also have some really fun lessons that we add to our YouTube Ooh, channel. Where are the samples? You got them over there? They're okay. over here. Oh, They're right. hiding. So you guys, this is cool. We were cool, recently cool. having a conversation about you know what, we need to keep our eye on what's trending. What are other people doing so that we can help them do it with stencils Yeah, and make it easier for them? Like, and, I'm going to jump in on yeah. that. So it's great to do what we're about to talk about 
as an artist where you have um, excellent drawing skills and proportion skills and brush skills. And, but if you don't have those skills, it will take you five years to get to that skill level, but stencils level the playing field and it makes it so that we have had five-year-olds come and stencil at our shop in town and they have done as good a job as a 50-year-old. So stencils level the field. You can do anything with a stencil as long as you offload. Well, offload I also, brush. so a couple things with this. Okay, so what we did over the weekend was we did the TikTok trend of the thrift store ghost painting. So you go to your thrift store, you find a random painting, and then you paint ghosts on it. And a lot of people are doing it freehand. I have a friend who is a phenomenal artist and she'd posted hers last night. Yeah. And she had actually painted over the little girl in her oh, picture cool. and made yeah. the little girl a ghost. And someone commented and said, I would love to do that, but I can't paint. I was like, stencil, stencil. Yeah. <laughs> Can we just all like, you yeah. know, have our pickets That's right. on That's it. But so, yeah, so we have, um, it's Studio 12 Stencils. Um, we have, we're in the 7,000 number of our SKU. Um, so that means we have 7,000 titles. And we have a ton of bats and witches and ghosts and goblins and fences and tombstones and, and um, all the things. So in this lesson that is on YouTube, and Carrie will link it, um, I show you how to take apart the glass and the frame and how to paint on the glass. If you don't want to take it apart, I show you how to um, do four, I think it's three or four styles mm -hmm. of different things put together and how to do that. So using all of our stencils. And then I want to touch on, I'm going to take this away from yep. you. Are you done? Yep. You done with that? Okay, so... Um, I want to touch on storing stencils, but I don't want to do that just yet. So do we have more yeah, things to I talk about? Yeah, I actually am not done talking okay. about those. One of the two things with these, um, one reason you might want stencils is if you are scared of doing something like this. When we talk about painting on wood surfaces, we give you ways to fix it. Yeah. These might not be as easy to fix yeah. depending on what you're painting on. If you're painting on a piece of paper, if you're painting on a printed canvas, you might not have as much flexibility as yeah. you would on a wood surface. Now, granted, we paid, I think, $2 yeah. for these. Yeah, it was so like a buck or two super for cheap. Yeah. But then um, after that. So also the stencils, that's okay, the train is not off the track. The train is not because, off the Because um, also what's neat about stencils is that if you want to, say, do a fall bazaar or do something like that, you can do these over and over and over. Mm -hmm. You go to your yard sales, thrift them all, all through the year, and then have these in your um, your booth or you know on your Facebook marketplace or whatever, however you're marketing. And then you have this great upsell yeah. that other people could not do, and it was quick for you. I think um, this guy right here, I bet you took maybe five ten minutes max yeah. to do, and um, from beginning to end, it was nothing to do. So this is so great for just doing fun, odd, quirky decor. It's fun for, you know, funky gifts for people. And then I can't wait to see what people do with, like, other things for Christmas yeah, or something. Like, I, can, I can totally see this going other places. And Is there an elf on the shelf that the, they can we put can, in the we thing? Probably <laughs> not specifically that, yeah, but, but yes. Um, so I want to make sure you can put it down, but we're okay. still going to talk about it for a second. That a lot of people, when they see the title of the video or see what our newsletter says about them, might initially be like, eh, I'm not going to watch it. I don't like to paint ghosts. There is so much more to every video yeah. than the these content is themes. amazing. Yeah. In this video, you learn how to clean up old projects. You learn how to paint on frames. You learn how to paint on paper. You learn how to paint on a printed canvas. Yep. You learn how to paint on, on glass. glass. That's the one everybody always wants to know about. Yep. And so that's that's what's so... The, the lesson is thrifted ghosts, but the lesson is painting on glass, painting on canvas, painting mm -hmm. on paper, painting on frames. Yeah, painting all on, of them. Yeah, and, and how to clean it up, how to take it out of the frame. How to, So every lesson that we put together, um, and, you know, so I don't need any, like, you know, applause or anything... Yeah, we'll do snaps just, instead. Yes, little snaps. Um, but what we do for you is we try to make the lesson be so involved so that you get as much meat off that bone mm -hmm. as possible. Yep. 
And that is the goal always. Yeah. And, and this weekend, our video is going to kind of be the same way. So our video that we're releasing this weekend, we had in mind a sports ball theme. Yeah. It's sports ball season, and we live in a town that is very much loves one particular football team. One team. And to rule all teams. That particular school is very <clears throat> um, strict yeah. about what you are and are not allowed to paint and say with their colors and their logo. So this weekend we are giving you some clever and unique ways to kind of get your mind yeah. out of the box if you have someone who likes sports ball. Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> sports ball season is just the best season because <laughs> that means I have time to do other projects in my house because there's somebody that is tied to that tube. Oh, you know? to the, yes. Yeah. So yeah. it's, and once again, you're like, oh my gosh, I don't like sports ball. Well, guess what? But everybody has, you have your, how many sports ball fans do you have in your life? Exactly. Grandpa, uncle, brother, dad, um, son, mm -hmm. bro uh, son-in-laws. Yeah. Um, like, what do you buy a son-in-law when you don't like, no. You know, like I have all sons, so I have the daughter-in-law problem. Thankfully, they all garden, so that yes. makes it easy. I just get them all the same thing and it's perfect. But yeah, if you have son-in-laws that you don't know what to buy them, then you make them something for their man cave, sports ball yeah. cave, whatever the thing is. Well, and, and then we're also going to show you how that you can let them promote and have fun with their sports ball team yeah. without actually having a sports ball Yeah, you ball don't sign. have to get the personalized. Yeah. You don't have to get the mm -hmm. customized. You don't yeah. have to do any of that. Yeah, so. so it's a super fun video. Yeah. Um, our project of the month has started arriving. We've had several people comment just Yay. today and said they got theirs and they can't wait to paint it. Yay. We have already had people who have watched and commented on our exclusive video with Patty showing some ideas. Yeah, you guys, so that's in the project of the month. Um, we are working through all of the logistical pieces mm -hmm. of it. But right now, it's just each month we're releasing one. So if you want to be a part of it, then you um, simply purchase it. When, and it, then, when we offer it when for pre-sale. We, pre -sale. It. we yeah. will be offering the next one for pre-sale um, coming up very soon. Yeah. We will make sure right. to announce it when we release it. And so then you won't know what you're getting because that's the whole idea of unboxing something that is just a special treat. Yeah. Um, and so then you'll get that. Um, and then there's a private video mm -hmm. that will be on a flyer inside that that will show you the address or a QR code, QR code. to get well, to both. it. Yeah, either. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then that will be me showing you all the pieces and parts and things. And there's so much stuff, you guys. It's yeah. like at least double or more of your money. So we are putting in the value for you. Mm -hmm. um, we just really want everybody to have that excitement. Yes, agreed. It's so cool. And then, so today. Well, I can say that again. It's so cool. It's so can cool. Can we spell that? I think it's K E W L. I right? think so. Cool. I think it is yeah. too. Um, Two more things. One, we are going to do a lot of giveaways today. A lot. So in the comments, if you ask a question regarding to something painting, like don't ask who, like how I did my hair today. But if you're going to, if you have a craft or painting or stencil or DIY yes. question, ask it in the comments. And then everybody who asks a question will be entered to win a prize. And I have... You guys. A ton of stuff to give away. What? So, ask your questions. Get on it. In the comments. Start going. And then right make sure now. to check back on our Facebook page Thursday at 12 p.m. Eastern. Okay. We will announce a winner or winners. We might have a lot. I don't know. You have to tune in to see. All right. So, Carrie's in charge. Um, butter her up. Be yeah. nice to her. Yeah. I mean, you can say how nice my hair looks. Um, but, so today we're talking about buffalo plaid, different plaids, types of yeah. plaids, and our plaid stencils are 50% off today. Yeah, and you guys, that's a big deal. A huge deal. We very rarely, we might put them on sale for a little bit off, but yeah. these stencils are really intricate. You're yeah. going to love them. They take a while on the machines to cut, which is why we don't yeah. put them on sale very often. So it's one day only. Plaid stencil sale, get them. And it's now. it's all the patterns of the plaids. And so we have one, um, which is the London Fog Plaid, I think. Isn't mm -hmm. that the one that's the really, really... I think it's that. that. 
That one, that this might be a black right watch. I don't know if that's black watch or black London watch. Fog. I think it's a black watch and not London fog. Mm -hmm. But there is a London fog. There is a black watch. Um, we'll talk about him in a second. So I'm going to move Mr. Flowers and we're going to talk about how to paint on a paint can. Okay, so you're going to, we're going to paint on a paint can. We're going to paint on some ribbon. We're going to paint on, um, I'm going to show you the burlap. We're not going to paint on it. And then I want to show you trends. So we went to market at, so a market is three skyscrapers, 17 stories tall, um, full of single one-off display of like, this is a table runner. Here's the display. Mm -hmm. There's only one. It's not like going to the grocery store where you have a wall of like Captain Crunch. Um, there's one of each thing in 17 stories tall, three skyscrapers. Okay. Floor after floor after floor after floor after floor. And it's in Atlanta. It's downtown Atlanta on Peach Street. And it takes days and days and days to get through it. And you'll never get through it all. And so we usually spend about four days there um, in winter and then in summer. And so we went during summer just a little while ago. And buffalo plaid and tea towel was on everything, including Easter, including um, the like Americana, including including everything. Like when I say everything, it's everything. So a couple of things that we got in. I love, love, love this table runner. And it's ginormous. Okay, so this table runner is amazing, right? But some of these things, when you get them pre-done, they're also expensive. So we want to talk about saving money. And then this is reversible, which is super cool. So this is not seasonal. And then you can just reverse it over to the red side, which I adore. And then a couple of other examples, headbands in the buffalo plaid. So that's going to be your um, Christmas and your fall. And then look at the little apron. So you've got, I'm going to do Mama Chef first. So you've got Mama Chef, you've got your plaid up here, then you've got your tea towel stripes, and then you have your baby mini chef, and it's got the tea towel stripe trim. So adorable. it's adorable, right? <laughs> Steve was like, aw. Um, oh, and it's Velcro, and it stuck to me. So that's a very clever idea, actually. So, but you have your trim, then you have your plaid. So plaid is everything for the season. So we want to show you about it so that you can do it on the cheap or on the DIY. Okay, so I think I wanna start with ribbon. Um, ribbon was an interesting concept for me because um, when you need a ribbon, you need a ribbon. So in my need a ribbon phase, um, we had an entire, I'm the tote that's the size of like your camping gear tote, you know what I'm talking about? Um, full of all of this ribbon. We have a video on how to recreate this. This is a shoe wrap, believe it or not. So you can reverse it. Um, I don't, we didn't count how many spools, but it's a lot. It's a lot. This has been in effect for at least nine months or more. I think it's maybe even over a year. Seven but months. Seven months. Okay, not that Thank, long. Thanks to YouTube, seven months. Thanks to yeah, YouTube. Anyway, so if I have, we've got prices on these. Um, so you buy them 50% off. Um, Hobby Lobby is where I get a lot of the stuff because that's the only store that we have in our region period. Um, so this is $7.99. Okay, so it's $7.99. And then this guy over here, these both are $3.99. But I noticed that like this guy is the same company as these two and they're $3.99. And now it's going to depend on how many, this is four yards, this is... 30 feet, somebody do some math about how many yards 30 feet is. Um, three, three feet it's is 10. So it's 10 um, feet, so, or 10 yards. Thank you. Okay, but my point is, is that you can buy this for $3.99, you can buy this for $3.99. But when you, and Steve, if you can punch over here to the red row, can you hear me okay though, uh, Nick? Okay. So if you look at the red row there, we have tea towel stripes. We have black polka dots on red. We have a white and red gingham. We have a teeny gingham. We have a chevron. We have a paisley. We have polka dots. We have all the things, right? Every one of those is the $3.99, say, or maybe it's $7.99. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Of the ones I mentioned, seven of those times the $3.99. If you just have a couple rows, 
um, rolls of plain red and you need just a pop of color like, it's the bottom one, of course. Come here, you. Good gravy. Yep. All right, my ribbon fell off. Okay, so we've got these little um, sticky things holding things on that did obviously not work past a year. But anyway, so I could make a touch of a little plaid using my pattern stencils. We have teeny, teeny, teeny little checks just like this. So stencils can make your accent ribbons when you don't have that color. So you have your stencil on hand and over and over and over again, you can just make an accent in the pink, accent in the purple, accent in black and white, um, whatever you need. So it is so cool to be able to make your own accent so you don't have to stock an entire store. I'm a stencil company, I have to have ribbon. I have to have it ready to go. Um, but if I don't, I can make it, you know? So that is the coolest thing about that. Little guy, you need to go back to your home. All right, so let's talk about painting on ribbon. How many of you have ever painted on ribbon? Give me a show of hands. Okay, so I have just the white ribbon and this is just the buffalo plaid. So how cool is that, that you can just paint that into your white ribbon? Um, I did all of the little sample paintings this morning. It didn't take any time, but I wanna give you the hints that I know about this. One thing about fabric and ribbon is fabric and, fabric and ribbon move. So you wanna use your tape and you wanna give yourself a little tapey tape point then however much you feel comfortable with on your surface, you wanna pull it nice and tight and tape it down on both sides. Then you're gonna take your stencil, and I was using the nine inch stencil, so this one, and then you're going to mind your tails. Take your, haha, jumbo dabber hopefully, you can always tell when I'm using them all because I'm out. Okay, so remember um, at the beginning, I don't know if you caught it, but I said the one thing about stenciling is as long as you can be the five-year-old and do a good job as long as you offload. That's the key, 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 and that seems to be the missing key for a lot of people, so offloading is very important. So I'm gonna dab into my paint and then I'm going to dab off and offload most of that paint. And then what I, do with my stencils on a ribbon is I get it kind of positioned straight and then I give my stencil a tape as well because it, it will tend to especially on this slick ribbon it will tend to want to slide around so get it lined up give it a tapey poo and then you'll just move it along as you go so then you just tap 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 and I can look around and I can be like whatever what's going on in the sky over there and I can paint without looking because that's how easy this is and I'm not being sensational, it literally is that easy. And you don't want to flood fabric with paint. You wanna go ahead and give it two coats and then you'll hit the blow dryer and do the thing. I'm not gonna do a whole solid coat here. But by securing the ribbon and securing the stencil, you've made everybody secure. And so that means that things won't be moving around on you and then we'll take a look. So let's go ahead and peel that up. And so there you have just one, one coat. It will take two coats. And that is how you paint on ribbon. And then you just wait and go ahead and I'll cut this off. And then you can use it in your things. And what I love about this is you could, oh, these scissors, what the heck? Um, that's like a shame. Um, anybody that is a scissor snob just like cringed with me. I am the worst scissor snob, and that, yes. that needs to be fixed. Okay, so, um, and then with the ribbon, what you do when you get done to keep everything. Um, by the way, ribbon storage is the same as toilet paper roll storage. You need to decide if you're an over or an under, and you need to do them all the same. So whatever you are, be consistent, because that will be very easy to unspool it and, and thread it out. So I'll put that away, and we won't stack that up. Um, Brenda asked, what stencils are your best sellers? It's funny you ask that on a day when we are doing this specific project because our Buffalo Plaid stencil is by far our best-selling stencil. 
Yeah. On, on the studior12.com website. Yeah. You guys need, okay. So many of you, um, if you're, if you're not, you might be whatever. Um, but doing, if you're a vinyl lover, um, make your own stencils out of vinyl. Like I, I literally don't care one way or the other. Um, stencils make life easy, whether they're vinyl or mylar. Um, I'm a mylar girl, but these are reusable over and over. And I cannot even imagine I'm using my panic voice, um, being faced with weeding one of these out and then using it once and then reprinting it and then weeding it out and then reusing it once. Um, and so like if I needed to do an all over, which is something we're going to do, um, on that, um, I haven't told you about that part yet. But if I needed to move it over and over with vinyl, you can't do that. So Mylar is reusable. You can wash it. We have a how to clean your stencil video. And if you guys like the content that you get, make sure you give us a thumbs up and um, like and subscribe, ring the bell. But um, anyway, if you wanna move it, you can't move it with a vinyl stencil. So this would be an example of a stencil that you would want to buy as a Mylar piece, um, any of our other stencils. Um, this is a really weird little guy right here. I'm gonna show you about this in just a little bit. But um, any of the ones that you would use as background patterns and stuff like that, the pattern stencils, can you imagine weeding this little guy? Yeah. Ah! No. <laughs> this is like terrible. Even the one with the stripes would be horrific. The dots, anything. So anything that's repetitive, anything that you're gonna use again and again, you definitely want to just go ahead and buy it, have it stored. And then that will transition me into last week's um, video with the ghosts. So we had our ghost stuff. So we had a whole bunch of our stuff printed out. And I want to show you about stencil storage. So this is the disc binder storage. So this, these are those journals that everybody's using in the... Um, <coughs> Excuse me. God bless you. Um, and so they make fantastic little rings for the stencils and you just rip them out and then you just pop them back. Whoops, hi. Just pop them back in. That was super simple. So you just pop them in. Um, it actually is very, very simple. Um, and it has a punch that is a, um, looks like a thumbtack little um, punch. And it has all of those and that's enough to do this. When I was putting these Halloweens in their own little book, um, and it makes it so lovely because you can just take out a book and shop by theme. Um, I love that. If I'd have had this when we started, oh my Lanta, that would have been fantastic. So anyway, but then I ran into something strange. So this one didn't have quite enough border on it to be able to punch it. And I actually had a talk with our designers this morning um, about making sure that one of the edges has enough of a border to be able to punch because this is that good. I I'm willing to change everything that we do to make sure we have that clearance so that it can happen. And most of them do. I give it 80% do. And then every now and again, you run across a couple of weirdos, which is these guys. So we had this little guy right here, little faces, little paw prints. And so what I did is I simply punched around the design and then I put it in as a little tiny bit. And then this guy had all of his pieces were too close to the edge. So I put him on the top and I just punched two places. So this works actually, and this one's just one place. So this system works even if you have things that are just kind of a little bit funky. And then if you have a really long, These are, I think they're J-hooks, and they're just an adhesive, but this is way too big to be in this little book right here. So I have a um, Ikea curtain rod that is wire, and we mounted it, instead of mounting it on the wall, we mounted it under the shelf, and then the wire goes across, and then we just hang everything like clothes, and so you can have them, actually you can color code them if you want. You could put um, you know, a little sticker on there that's in a color, but it makes it so easy to find everything if everything is kind of put away. And so the books are great. We've got them for words, we've got them for patterns, we've got them for Halloween, Christmas. And then the long storage is amazing. And they stack up really well. Actually, I'm shocked about that. But that's kind of an update on this. This has been magic. We've been going on about this for a long time. 
We've used it. We've got um, piles of stencils under here because that's just the space that I have. But we stack them in the books and the books just kind of come out whole and they don't catch on each other. They don't do any of the dumb stencil things. Can I ask you some questions? Yes. I call for questions and we've got questions. Um, DJ asked, is it better to stencil ribbon with soft fabric paint or does the regular paint give it puff? Um, regular paint does not. Um, it is, it's actually super slick. Um, feel. Oh, yeah, you can you, hardly even you feel can, it. You, it. It kind of feels like it might, like it's printed on. Yeah. So it's, some of these. But not rough, like in a plasticky thick no, way. It's going to, it feels just like these. Yeah. Just like these two do that are a little bit printed. Yeah, you could do fabric paint if you wanted to really take it to that level. Um, if you do the fabric paint, you still have to add a medium. Um, paint doesn't come out of cloth. Um, you're going to be golden. Just regular paint works. And then Ellen is asking... How do you get a second stencil, such as a pumpkin, to cover well over the buffalo plaid? Mm -hmm. So, like, our Merry Christmas could be a good instance of that, I think. I think you're exactly right. Oh, hi. And cobwebs. Um, I almost died because of a spider this week. We don't want to talk about it. <laughs> it's dramatic. It was very dramatic. <laughs> it was dramatic is what it was. Um, anyway, so this has got the black and the red buffalo. This is number 18 and number 20, is it 27 and 28 for black? Um, 28 is black and 27 is white. Yeah. So, um, but it's number 18 is the red that we use for a lot of Christmas. It works so well. Um, if you don't know what we're talking about, we have a color chip chart um, that will tell you all of our colors. And we had a customer, so we take customer questions very seriously. And I'm gonna give Carrie the big props because she's the organizer. I know, um, I, kinda, I kinda shot myself in the foot this week now with asking, <laughs> asking all these yeah, questions. Yeah, ah! um, I'll Annie, get to them, I promise. Yeah, she, she will, trust me. But um, anyway, so somebody was asking questions about, and now I derailed off of my train track. Um, Someone was asking how to cover the buffalo plaid yeah, when you paint a Not that question, I'm thinking of oh. the one from earlier the week. It doesn't matter, but this question. Um, I know, it'll come to me, it'll be fine. Anyway, so, shh, Steve. Everybody give Steve, I don't know, give him a thumb, don't give him a finger. <laughs> Just <kidding. laughs> Okay, so you paint it and then you put your next stencil on top of it and then you can, in this case, because it's white, um, it, and it black is really strong, um, it might be good to do one coat of a gray, a medium gray, and my paint drawer is not blocked, so medium gray would be number 38? 1336. Oh, 36, that yeah. was the one I was looking at. So um, that a medium gray would be a good choice, and then you just continue on with white until you get it coated. It takes a little bit to go over it, but the background effect is amazing. Amazing. Um. Josephine asks, what would you recommend to hold large wall stencils from shifting or bleeding? So tape. Lots um, of tape. You could use, yeah. yeah, I would use like a thick, um, thicker maybe even than this, like the painter's tape and the, the blue, you know, and then just anchor it on your four corners. Mm -hmm. And then you want to use your roller to paint on wall stencils. I'm going to show you how to do this on Rocklawn. I don't know if you guys know what Rocklawn is. I'm saying that, so you'll hang around and see. Um, because it's pretty amazing. Okay, this guy, he's been abused. Um, so because he has a ribbon and he has greenery, um, it, it just, where we stack and store things, it just gets knocked around. Um, this is held up for a good long time. I think this is the last year's sign, so. Y yes. Yeah, so um, it's been getting kicked around for quite a bit and it's doing well. Um, but this is the buffalo plaid in the green, which I think is so cool. So we want to show you just a couple of examples of what else you can do with buffalo plaid. Don't think of buffalo plaid as only buffalo plaid. Think of it as any of the plaids. Um, and in the case of the apron, this would be an example of something like the London plaid, the black watch plaid, any of those. So you would do them in layered colors and stuff like that. So. This is one kind of plaid, this is another, but the plaid's bringing it, man. Okay, so that's in green. And then I love this because this is putting the plaid. So, oh, and I've got an example on the backside too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, super cool. I love when we're playing with boards and then we get surprises that are cool. Um, so you take your gray color and then you do your 
the deer shape and you make it all red and you do that and then you lay your plaid stencil over with the, the stencil under it still in place. And then that is going to make it so it's a mask. And then you can stencil over the top of the color and that, and that is gonna give you that effect. And then here it is in a neutral. Isn't that fun? Love it. Okay, and then this is just another example of doing, so this has got snowflakes in the background, like the backgrounds, you guys, you can do so much with a stencil in the background. So anyway, so you can do the whole background in your buffalo plaid, put your band on, put your background snowflakes on, and then do your stencil on top. Super fun. Okay, now let's get to burlap. We got more questions? Oh, I have a ton. I'm so proud. Are you using fabric paints on clothes? I do not. I just use regular paint. Um, if I wanted something, if I was painting on a silk, or if I was painting on a silk, then it would not be Patricia. So <laughs> that's not probably going to happen. But um, if I was painting on something soft and supple, I would probably use the fabric paint and I would probably go ahead and use um, the medium to go with it. There's a fabric medium that makes it um, softer and more flexible, but I haven't, I haven't found a problem. So like, if it's not a problem, why do something different? I don't know. Okay. Burlap. Super interesting. We have a video that is um, really pretty recent that we did a tray insert with the burlap on top of it. So burlap is fun because it's affordable and cheap and all those things. And so that is what it looks like with just one coat of the paint through the stencil. And it's the same as like the ribbon. You want to tape it down in your four corners. You're going to lay your stencil down on top of it. But how fun would that be as like as anything? Like if you wanted a table runner out of burlap, that would be so amazing. You can press it and then you can um, just to get it like to get the wrinkly things out. You can wash it. What was the thing about washing? Somebody recommended putting it in something to wash it. I can't remember what a that was. A garment bag. A garment bag, yeah. So, um, yeah, so you don't want this to get clogged up into your regular washing system. It's like cat hair. It's just everywhere. Cat hair and glitter. Yeah. <laughs> the two, they're just like related. All right, so burlap is a really great product to do. And then let's go a little bit more examples. We're going to talk about Rocklon, which is amazing. I don't need that, Steve. Um, and then this is an example of another color. So this is a cute little fall with a burlap um, design, a little bit of metallic. And we have videos on our site for, on the YouTube channel for um, doing the me metallics through, the leaf through your stencil. Yeah. But um, I love this in the blue. Yeah, that, had, that video had so many different lessons yeah. of the, the outline and then how to paint a circle. Yeah, because that is a circle stencil with the band. Yes. Yeah. It's so cool, you guys. There, there are so many things. I was thinking on my way into work today, and so I love these thoughts when I have them, um, that if you gave me your most world's most advanced stenciler, they would teach me things, but I could darn well teach them things too. So like we have so much knowledge between the group of us all, like we, we're here to share that knowledge. This is the one that I wanna talk about next. This is, um, that was a really arrogant pounding moment. We're not gonna to be too arrogant. Um, I just wanna share with you guys. Okay, so this is this guy. So when I first saw this, and I think I asked for it to be made, so that's kind of funny, um, but we're backwards. Okay, so when I first asked for this to be made and then I saw it, it was like, what is going on with that? So what you do is you put it on in one direction and then you turn it and you do the other direction and that is what gives you the crisscross. And what I love about this one, probably the most of any stencil that we've made, is it gives the weave of the fabric, like just as if the fabric was woven. Because this is super soft and faded, but this has got two layers because we flipped it and turned it. And so that makes that piece darker. And so everywhere where it's been done twice, you have that layering effect and it gives that visual woven fabric look and it's incredible and this one i'm going to give you a number on this guy if i can read the numbers there's so much paint on here where are your numbers um carrie you might have to help me because i literally can't see a number on here paint it out 
this is the coolest thing. And now, and then the other thing that we do with this is we put this stick and restick on the back side of it. And make sure that you don't paint over your stick and restick or it won't stick or restick anymore. Right. So don't do that. So that is very important. But isn't this the most clever, clever way to make a stencil? Um, can I have you before we move on? Mm -hmm. Can you just hold up the different buffalo plaid stencils that we okay. have, like the largest and the smallest? Yeah. Um, Norma said, I would like the buffalo plaid in different sizes mm -hmm. slash squares. So one of the cool things that we do is a lot of our stencils, the design grows yes. with the size of the stencil. So our buffalo plaid stencil that's an 8x8 eight eight or 9x9 nine nine is going to have a completely different size of buffalo plaid than our 18x18. 18 18. Yeah, so, yeah. so yeah, you get the, the growy part of transitioning to a bigger size, yeah. the growy part. The fall technical. plaid stencil is STCL 5930. 5930. And you guys, it's magic. Um, it looks good in blue. It looks good in cream. It looks good in everything. Um, this is amazing. And by the way, somebody, we don't get to our finishing all the time in our videos, but somebody has waxed this. And I don't know if you just caught that, but I was just like, oh, I have to talk about this. It feels so good when you wax your projects. Um, it's not just for the finish, it's it's for the, the feel. And it feels good to have that like waxy bit on there and it just feels finished and awesome and complete and all the things. All right, let's talk about paint cans. And then we're going to talk about, um, I got a few other seasonal examples. Okay, so this is literally a paint can. Okay, and it was, I was on my way out to um, spray some finish on something and I went through the warehouse part of our building and this can was sitting there with no lid on the way out to the door. I don't know why um, somebody, oh, there's actually like webs in there. There's like, anyway, so I was like, oh, I needed a flower pot for this. And I went to our little next door neighbor, um, little nursery and they had this little fall plant and Here's the thing with putting stencils on flower pots. I was gonna do something in paper, but I didn't have any like um, heavy paper here in the building that was big. I was gonna do a wrap around kind of thing, but um, I didn't have that. So I took this can outside, I peeled off the, I think this one is the Sherwin-Williams and I have another one down here that is uh, True Value. Okay, so this is what it looks like um, when it is not it's kind of shiny looking and so I took the rubbing alcohol and I took my paper towel and I just saturated that and I wiped it completely down because sometimes um, there's like release agents that are on the plastic of plastic cans um, if you have metal cans you're going to treat it basically the same way sometimes you can use uh, vinegar to release the solvents and stuff um, anyway so then after I wiped down my can, then I went outside as soon as it was dry and I used the Rust-Oleum 2X Ultra Cover Paint and Primer and it's flat black. You want it flat so that it's not shiny and slick and also bonds to plastic. So um, that is the product and it is amazing. It sticks to so many things like I'm actually where we've gotten to in the world of primers and stuff is incredible. So I primed it on the back and it has a little bit of a, um, of a velvety feel. It's kind of an interesting um, texture. It's got a little bit of a texture to it, but not a unpleasant. And then what I did is I took my towel. Yeah, stay there. I took my towel and I folded it in fours and I laid it down and then I turned it. And then I laid my stencil over the top. And what I did is I went ahead and I've got a really big trick for you guys. So stick around for that. Um, ooh, I could crisscross that. That would be fun. So then I lined up my stencil to the top line and I felt uncomfortable taping it to the can because the can was freshly primed and I didn't want to risk like pulling things off and stuff. So I held it with like my whole hand kind of thing, like I went from end to end, 
And then I took the dauber, which I don't have any more of right here. Mm -hmm. Here's. So dauber into the paint, offload, and then just daubed it on. And I did two rows at a time, blow dryer, did the thing. And so then you just are going to work your way around the can. But what I wanted to do with my second can, and I ran out of time, is we have this really cool um, giant, like, what's the dot one that we used on the spring tall porch sign? It's like a, it's like an arty kind of irregular line dot stencil. Yes. And I wanted to have like paint cans that you could fill with these pretty flowers, like going downstairs where you went like check dots, check dots, and it would just be super funky and fun. But what a cheap, wonderful recycling, upcycling used for a can of dried up paint. I love that. Okay, let's go seasons and then we're gonna go into the Rockleman. And that is gonna be the last of this. So this is, these two are examples, which one is, this is the um, gingham. That's the gingham. Yeah, so this one is a check and this is a gingham. The gingham overlaps like the, the Hello Fall um, in the orange. So everywhere where it overlaps, and there's not, you can't see very many because the little Mr. Fluffy bunny there. But um, you can see it right there. And so everywhere it overlaps, it does that darker, lighter thing. And that it just makes a great painterly effect. And I love that you can use all of these for your Easter projects and your summer projects. It's just amazing. And then this is what just a regular plaid um, will look like or just a check pattern. So, and that just makes a good basing banding outward frame. Oh, I've got the one over here. One more example. Reminded me, Carrie did this amazing project where you take your um, frame and then these are just put on with your contact, um, your command strips, and so then you can put different things in front of it. So this becomes your foundation piece. You can put your gather there. You can do a little gnome. Oop. And you can just put them on with the command strips and then change them for your season. And then this does a really cool thing because you're just doing like a band at the top and the bottom. A really different look. And then here's Easter, which looks super cool. Just on there with the black and the white. Isn't that amazing? I love it. Yeah, that was a fun project. All right, do we have more questions? We have a million. We're just going to have to sit down after lunch and tomorrow and then tomorrow after lunch and the next And day. next year. That'll learn you, Carrie. Okay, we're on our final, final piece, and that is going to be the rock line. And I think I have had to wait for a good long time to talk about this. I used to paint banners on rock lawn all the time because it's such a cheap, readily available product was everywhere, um, literally everywhere. However, um, the company got in some distress and um, had some things they had to take care of and they were unavailable for a good, good long time, um, a really good long time. And so then we were unable to get it. We used to bring it in and truck loads and stuff like that. But what Rock Lawn is, it's R-O-C-K-L-A-N-D. Oh, that's actually Rock Land owns the company makes rock lawn it's roc -L 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 -N. <laughs> sorry i was saying the company I, name i was, I was wondering if my eyes were getting big yeah, like, i was like nope what no no <laughs> so rock land owns this company that makes this product and that's it's kind of a funny like why is it rock lawn and if you're rock, rock land, land yeah. then it's just weird um yeah sorry i was talking about the company okay what is rock lawn okay it is drapery lining fabric and so this is the same fabric that you get in your hotel room that makes the sun not come in your room when you're jet lagged and you have, you know, whatever. And so that is what this is. That lines the drapes of things to make them black out. And they actually call the weight that we are painting on blackout weight fabric. So this is the one when you go to, and Joann's is where I always find it. I'm sure they have it other places. We just don't have access to other places here. Um, everything's an hour from us, you know, so um, anyway, so you can get this there. And what's great is at Joann's, they have their coupons and 
generally speaking, you can get it for 50% off and it runs about $8 a yard at retail price. And so then if you get your coupon for half off, then you're at like $4 a yard. And that's three feet by whatever the 58 or 50 inches the bolt is. It comes on the bolts. It's going to be back in the, um, in the upholstery section where you get the furniture, the furniture fabric. Okay, so there is a smooth side, um, which is super smoothy smooth. And then there's a canvasy feeling side. I like to paint on the canvasy side. I don't think there's a reason not to paint on both sides. Um, so you can totally do either and or. One is whiter, one is ecru color. Um, they make these in a couple of different colors. I think they even might have black, which would be super handy if you're trying to paint things black. But, um, but anyway, I'm gonna show you what about painting on this because it's amazing. And so those table runners that we were talking about, right? What is neat about this is when you cut it, it doesn't fray. So if it doesn't fray, that means you can cut it into shapes. And that's what I did with all my banners is there were leaf shaped bottoms to the banners and there were feet shapes if it was Halloween and there was all the other things. So it doesn't fray so you can totally have it um, not hemmed. And then um, something else that you can do is if you want to hem it, there's fabric fusion. If you don't have a sewing machine, you don't want to do that. Um, you can just use some fabric fusion, which has the double sticky stuff. You would fold that over, give it a little press if you wanted to, and then you'd put that tape under there, press it down. This says, I have not used this, this says that it will um, last through washing machines and stuff like that, but I would not wash a painted decorative thing. I would spray cleaner on it and wipe it down, but I wouldn't throw it in the washer. Questions at all? I feel like I'm throwing 800,000 tons of things. Um, I think that everybody is loving it. We've had some comments that say, thank you for your expertise. I am inspired. What a great idea. You always have great ideas. So I think that everyone is loving it. It's and it. Debbie loves the bunny butt. The bunny butt <laughs> is the <laughs> cutest. It is one of our fun favorite Debbie, projects. They, sister, they make those in all the colors so they make them and they're from Amazon and they make them in like um like whatever like a brunette colored bunny butt you know yeah, they, so they have you them can, in everything they're so cute and we specifically got the pink because we knew we wanted to do the Pop fun pink, yeah like pops of colors but to make it just an everyday decor kind of mm -hmm. thing and it could be like um so back over to my little samples I loved the detail of this with the little pom-pom. This is squished from the packaging, so you would open it up. But all they have done is they have taken strips and strips and strips of a fabric, and they mounted it over in half, and then tied it, and that gave it like a ghost head with the body, and then they, they stitched it onto the end of the thing. So, But the bunny butts would be so cute so on there cute. with like a little ribbon detail. And if you could figure out how to do a little like change it out, you could keep your same black and tan, um, black and cream, and totally have different pom-poms to go with it, which would be adorable. Okay, we're gonna cover how do you paint this stuff. So I have got mine rolled up. This does take a little bit longer to dry. Um, I finally took it outside and put it, um, it's like um, non-porous, just exactly like tin or something like that. So. It doesn't have an interior structure to absorb into, so it doesn't. And so then it has to absorb off into the air and that just makes it take longer. But it rolls like a dream. And then something that has been a question that I have answered 800,000 times is what happens if you get rolling on the ends, especially if you're hanging it like a banner. Um, when I've gone to trade shows, I took my banners to trade shows for 20 years. I would just heat it with my hand and then it would drop down and it would be completely fine. You could also heat it with a blow dryer um, if you get anything not behaving. Um, I wouldn't really iron it. I don't know if you could or should or would or whatever, but um, I never have. Um, so just do your own experimentation on that, but I haven't needed to. And so then the way to apply paint to this, you never ever want to brush it because it's gonna be thick and heavy and uneven. Um, you can brush the details on but you don't want to use like a, you know, um, oval glaze. You start slopping paint on there, it's going to grab into it because it's got a texture. 
it's gonna grab and it's just gonna be like, I'm right here. And then you're gonna have unevenness and you're gonna have a big battle on your hands. Something else that you can do is you can take your sandpaper and you can sand off any of the, the you can hear. Okay, so you can sand that down and then give one more top coat to um, use your damp, not damp, wet, but damp with paint roller just to even out any of the scratching that it does. But I've got some good raised texture on here and good can be good and good can not be desirable. So whatever way you wanna go, you can sand it, which I love that it's not wood and you can sand if it. If you are using the rock lawn as a tablecloth, mm -hmm. Sue asked if you could use grommets to be able to change out the tassels. Have you ever grommets, done anything like I, that with Okay, rock lawn? Sue, um, I need to get on YouTube and go looking for grommets because um, I have never used grommets. I, I know about them. I know what they do. I know well, what they are. And we've done them with our manufacturing yeah. so I don't like the big thing that you, ex part of that. that you yeah. expect to hang grommets yeah. from but I don't but know a little grommet would be fantastic that would be super, Sue, that's well and then you could change it if you're yeah. going to do a black and white yeah. plaid and mm -hmm. then you would want to add something different it for would be so season. cute my thought was to sew on a button and put a loop on the front yeah a button and a loop is Steve's thought and then if I was grommeting I probably would want one end to be heavy so it didn't pull like this isn't really stretchy. It's like if you know duck cloth, which is canvas, um, which is what I'm not even gonna go on the floor cloth end. I'm just that little, little, little rabbit trail. Anyway, but um, it, with this, because it's a lighter weight, I would probably fold it, hem it like with this tape and then grom it through the double um, end of something just to have a secure. Actually, I would yeah. worry that it would pull a little bit funny. Mm -hmm. So um, that's the thing. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to paint on Rockland, okay? And that is going to finish us out. Okay, so if you've been hanging around with us, um, shortcuts are the name of the game. We don't wanna work too hard. I hate washing rollers. Um, just, that's a capital H right there, but <laughs> Anyway, these will stay fresh in these full top baggies for um, a month. Three weeks to five weeks is where we found. And then you can just simply reload your roller. And then I seal that in. The idea is, is that paint won't dry if it doesn't have access to air. Paint drying is oxidation. So the air and the paint get together. They oxidize. That makes the paint dry. So if you keep the air out you don't have drawing. And so that's why when you get to the bottom of a bottle of paint, it's only got that much in it, and you get so much air in there that it oxidizes the rest of it. So that is why your paint dries. All right, so if I'm rolling, this is one of the tricks that is very important to know on the rock line. Such a great affordable surface and so good for home decor. So I'm gonna roll and I'm gonna push pretty hard, but the minute I the edge. So roll really heavy, roll off the edge, and then smooth it out if you have anything going. So, and then you're going to want to protect your surface um, with um, some wax paper or something like that. Make sure you newspaper, um, any of that kind of stuff. So that's how you base coat. I did two coats of this and it took an extremely long time. I would say in an hour to dry. It was like long. Um, and I didn't want to stand over it with the blow dryer because there's a lot of surface here. So I'm going to take my my wheel off there, put it down in there, and then I'm just gonna cinch everything down, and then I won't have to wash this after we get done. See where I'm going here? So um, then we just, that's ready for my next project. If you keep a roller head, and these come from, these are the Menards ones, I don't know. Um, this is Foam Pro is the brand, but they come in this big pack. If you keep one in all, if you're a um, make it all the time kind of artist, if you know you like to base in black, white, and green, mm -hmm. then keep one of these wet all the time, and then you have your wet roller, and then you pick it up, you re-wet it, you do your thing, put it back oh, in the it bag. It's like our stream's not working, guys. Yeah, we're not going Did to I talk too much? I don't know. We're still live on YouTube, but Yay. we're not on Facebook, and we're not on Twitch. So then, any of you who are still with us on YouTube, um, we're having technical difficulties on other channels, but so we're gonna go into our cream roller and I will show you 
how to make a pattern on here. There's a long leaf. Okay, so we're going to take our roller, use our little sheets of mylar, and we're going to roll and roll, and we're going to really press that paint into that roller. And then we'll take our paper towel, and this is the offload part, so no matter what you're doing, you're going to offload. So I'm going to press really hard. Um, if you get in a hurry and you skip this step, you will absolutely bleed under because a roller is different from anything else. Okay, and then you can also bleed through your um, through your um, paper towel. Okay, so now we're going to go on to I think I'll use the jumbo guy onto our piece of rock lawn. You make it nice and even, and you could secure everything. Remember the fabric moves. So you want to just secure, I'm going to go into the middle so that I can just show you the, I'm going to secure both of them together. So now I should be nice and firm. And well, and as you do that, can I talk about a couple quick, yeah. you can, you can still stencil if you want yeah, while yeah. I'm doing this, um, just so your paint doesn't go dry. But when you're thinking about what sizes you want to get and of your buffalo plaid and how you want to set it up. Think about if I'm going to be painting on a nine by nine surface, I might want to get a 12 by 12 buffalo plaid so that I don't have to move it around because a lot of our stencils have the outside border. You have so to. a nine yes. by nine stencil yes. might not cover a nine by nine surface and you might have a border around it. So Patty on this one has it pushed in a little bit. Mm -hmm. So she has a black line and then it'll stay a black line and then she will um, paint over top of that. So you also might want to pull your buffalo plaid over to the very edge if you want it to cover the And whole overlap it mm -hmm. completely, yes. And then there's one trick I need to show you about buffalo plaid that you want to stick around for one more little moment. So now when you're doing this, it, you do not want to push, push, push. If I push really hard, I can get it to base coat really easy, but I bled Ooh. the heck out of that. That's a mess. So, but then if we look down here, mm -hmm. this is super crisp. So your pressure is literally not even giving me any paint on my arm at all. You don't even want to push. If I push, I can base coat. So that's the way. Not many times I paint my arm for you. Okay, so I'm going to And then put, we're going to go to lunch. She's going to be like, I have paint all over my hands. I have paint on my hands. Um, find my bag. Okay, the trick to scaling your pattern. This I totally jacked this up today, and I know better. Totally, totally, totally. So I'll show you that trick, and then we are definitely then out of here. I, I have one more thing to add. Oh, one Carrie's got one more thing. Well, and we can talk about it now. Okay, go ahead. So when you are painting with plaid stencils and pattern stencils, however you start your stencil is the same place that you want to have it going. over. Is that where yes, you're going? That's exactly where I'm going. You go for it, and then I'll add to it. You guys, oh, my lanta, did I... And, and actually, it wiped off and cleaned up really well. Uh, right here is where I screwed up. So you've got your stuff, right? And if you lay is this, this one, I think it is. Um, nope. He's the bigger guy. If you lay this over, but if you forget and you kind of get onto a new band, so not every row has a solid. Mm -hmm. And so I laid it over so my solids were next because this lined up. So this made sense to me. Well, it was the solid and it was going to make everything be a solid. Now you could make it be a solid. Um, yeah. You could make it that pattern and be cute. But you got to do it intentionally. So you have to actually be thinking about it. Um, when you do anything. Okay, so, now you Well, I'm going to say, so a couple of tips for that. Mm -hmm. We always have a <coughs> little etch mark in the bottom right-hand corner mm. of your stencil. Yes. So you can always try to keep your eye on making that etch mark in the bottom right-hand corner. You can get the little, uh, either a little marker spot or even like the little price tag stickers for yard sales and mark one with a T and mark one with a B for the top and the bottom. But you're going to be very sad if you start painting these yeah. and then you just throw it on and realize that halfway through that one mm -hmm. of your buffalo plaids goes this way and the rest go this way. 
Yeah, and then and it's actually interesting because then when you go on here, if you lay it on the opposite way, it would make such a cute gingham pattern. It would be the it cutest would, little gingham. Well, when you put that on there first, I was like, what's she doing? I like it. I know, yeah. <laughs> and so you could it. totally make a different effect <laughs> out of it. So there's that. But all of what we just said about the top and the bottom works with all of our background patterns. We have so many background patterns. Um, you want to know which is your right and which is your left because they, they ebb and they flow. And then this one is meant to go directly over next to that one, just like the wall stencil that you were asking about earlier. Um, they are meant to fit mm -hmm. together. And if you have them laying this way, they will not fit together. So those are all the buffalo plaid tips I have <laughs> in my said, body. I, Brenda said, now I need to check the projects I already did. <laughs> And it's funny, you won't catch them. I'm, no. I'm impressed I caught that because I was ready to go. Yeah. And mm. You guys, thank you so much for joining us. Um, we love yeah. this Tuesday time with you, and we'll see you Tuesday.